question. Hey, I'm, all I can say is, man, I'm blessed more than I deserve. Um, really, 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 really am uh, to to be standing before you. Uh, obviously, uh, to it's, I'm very fortunate to be the head coach at the University of Virginia, especially with that group of young people that have, man, the, the just the decision that they made uh, when they came back and, and the way that they've persevered and and work every single day and, and the fans, the way they support us, uh, man, I'm, I'm, I'm truly blessed uh, more than I deserve. With everything that this program has been through, has getting back to having joy on the field, having fun, has that been a process? Because there can be a, a sense of I don't know, like guilt about you know, having fun again. Right. Um, you know, I think that, that, that every kid, when they start playing the game, they play it because it's fun. Right, they just they just want to have fun, and and I've said it, you know, since the day that I got here, the challenge is trying to go back to that place of having childlike fun, and and I think that everything that transpired and and the break was good for the guys. Uh, they came back, and and to a man, they they were truly committed to just getting back to having fun. And understanding that yes, there is a business piece to it, right? There's there's things that you might not like uh, about the game to, to that you have to do to prepare, but uh, but just finding joy uh, and then leaning on your brothers, as Tony just said, you know, being being able to pick each other up, uh, it's been fun. It's been it's been inspiring to me as a coach to see you know these young people set the tempo. You know, I think that that initially, uh, kind of the, the the responsibility was on the coaching staff to kind of kind of lead them through, you know, that that adversity. And then, you know, once they got their feet back underneath them, you know, they were able to to clearly, you know, make a decision. And the decision that they made is, you know, we're going to to work every single day with purpose to make sure that uh, that we turn the tragedy into a triumph. Tony, there's a a, a risk reward element when you play as much live football mm -hmm. and tackle to the ground as much as you did this spring. To get through the spring in the kind of health the team is now, how how much does that put you ahead when you can do that and come out healthy? Right, great question. Uh, when you look at it defensively, uh, five guys that are projected starters or have been had starting roles were out this spring. So uh, you're already down from that perspective and you're trying to evaluate and, you, and it's year two. Uh, you're still, you know, kind of in that uh, uh, phase of, of installing, you know, the core offense, the core defense, and and then you start back over uh, each spring. Uh, so we, we really challenge the guys, and you only have 15 practices with three uh, live scrimmages, and then you have 50-50 days, and so you have to manage it. And there was a stretch uh, where we had, you know, probably, you know, about six, seven days where, you know, most of those days we were getting after it, and the guy didn't have much of a break. But I tell you what, they came with that energy, that joy, uh, that tenacity, and and, uh, and we were able to um, to get good work. And I think also, too, you know, what I've learned as a coach more times than not, when you're going full speed, you know, it's not when you get injured. It's when you're not when you're not going full speed. So we knew that we had to, you know, push this group to develop them. Uh, and the only way you can develop them is playing, you know, playing football. Uh, and, but we were strategic uh, the best we could uh, to make sure that we, we, we didn't, you know, take advantage of the guys' bodies. Uh, but we pushed them uh, so that we can get good evaluation because for us, we don't put the pads back on you know, until until August, and we don't play a game until September. And so this was the last opportunity for us to kind of evaluate the guys that we may not have seen in a game environment, and then also evaluate the guys that are going to have a more significant role, you know, in a uh, in a game environment, and see how they respond. Tony, I know we've talked a lot about Mike Collins this spring, but to see him score in a spring game and saw his brother go over and hug <laughs> him, he, he put the ball on Deshaun's name. Uh, you know, what was your what was your reaction? Oh, it's just. Uh, um, that's what it's all about. And and when I saw that we got down there a couple of times, you know, I called Deuce over and, you know, there's not going to be many other times where he's going to have a chance to see his brother score from that vantage point. And then I was talking about the celebration, what's he going to do? And uh, just you want, wanted Mike to, to be able to, to experience that moment with uh, with Deuce because Deuce has been here all week and, and really been an inspiration to us, you know, to see him uh, around practice every single day and uh, just the, the, the guys uh, really rallying around Mike and, uh, and he and, you know, Mike and I had a, a brief conversation on the practice field the other day, and it was about, you know, obviously Mike still he's carrying a lot. You know, he's carrying a lot, and and uh, and he wants to to do everything that he can to do things the right way. Uh, and there's going to be days where where all of us are going to be emotional. I get emotional if I go a certain route on campus or on grounds at times. You know, I tear up a little bit, and so there's going to be times. But also too, I know that 
the, the, the byproduct of everything that we went through is that relationships are going to be better. And so that was a great opportunity to see him and, and, uh, and his brother, you know, experience that. And then he's, he shared a moment with his, uh, with his brother uh, that he knows was, was with him in spirit today. As the game was winding down, I ran into a bunch of players who were stars here 15, 20, 25 years ago. Mm -hmm. They seemed pretty happy. What has been your relationship with that group? Really trying to, to bring all those guys back. And I uh, had a chance to go over to the alumni function uh, last night. And my message to them is, this is not my program. It's our program. It's their program. And, you know, they have blood, sweat, and tears equity uh, on Scott, uh, in Scott Stadium over at McHugh. Uh, and I want them back uh, and involved. And I don't want anything from them other than them to have relationship with the younger guys. Because for all who have played the game know that it's a brotherhood. And we need to make sure that that brotherhood is thriving and it's alive. Uh, but it takes us making sure that we make, uh, you know, Scott Stadium, make McHugh, make uh, our program accessible to them. And then they have to make the commitment to come back because there's no better person to help these young people than somebody who's walked in their shoes, somebody who's walked grounds and lived their experience and then also has been to the future. And so, uh, you know, I'm trying to, to create a mentorship program with all of my players and a former player just as a big brother and in hopes that we can keep the circle going, you know, over time. Uh, but uh, they say tradition never graduates. And I want everybody who, who's a part of, of, of this program to understand what it means to represent the V-Saber. And I want every player to know uh, the responsibility that they have when they walk out on the field with the V-Saber. And there's nobody greater uh, than the former players to, to, to help them understand uh, what it means. Um, how did it feel for you playing a game in Scott Stadium for the first time since November? It was a, a little emotional at first. You know, you walk down and you have a chance to, to see the uh, the beautiful graphic uh, that uh, uh, that was designed and then then then, then placed uh, on the field by the grounds crew. And a little emotional, you know, when you think about it, uh, because we're the ones that are fortunate to to be on the grass, where three young men are not. Uh, fortunate to be on the grass and then their families will not have a chance to see them play on the grass again so it kind of puts it in perspective and then once you get back playing you know as a as a football player and a competitor you know that's your safe place to be honest with you uh, that's where you kind of nothing else matters once once the whistle blows they put the ball down nothing else matters uh, it's where you can kind of find peace you can find solace um, and then once you step off the field then kind of reality comes back into perspective so for me it was a little emotional and then they're addressing the fans at the end uh, is emotional as well because this is I mean it's real life I mean it's 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 real life and you never as I told the fans like you never wake up in the morning expecting or thinking that you're not going to see your loved ones again right you expect to wake up in the morning right you see your circle of friends you enjoy them for a day you go to sleep at night and then you expect to wake up the next morning and and have those folks around and for 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 not just you know our folks but all over the country you know people are dealing with you know the loss of life and and, and tragic loss of life and so it, it puts things in perspective and and so you have an opportunity to use that space to be a safe place but you also have an opportunity to use that space to inspire somebody and that was my message to the to the team is we have a chance to change the world today and truly do uh, because a lot of people are tuning in to see you know how are the Cavaliers going to respond you know what's this team going to look like and so the spirit that that I that I've seen day in and day out that's all I wanted them to do was show the world the spirit that they have uh, they had a great opportunity to show uh, and encourage everybody how you respond you know when you face a tough time and and, and for the most part I felt like they did a really good job of, of letting everybody see you know their spirit and their joy and their fun and their passion uh, for playing the game and their appreciation. The spring game is always an opportunity for young guys to flash. There's yeah. a lot of young guys that flash today, yeah. Anthony Colandrea, Trey McDonald. What's kind of your assessment of those kind of guys today? You know, I've said it, uh, uh, you know, for, for a while about Ant. He's a ball player. You know, he's uh, and he's the. It seems like the bigger the stage, the brighter the lights, and that's what you saw. You know, you saw a chance for. And and what I liked is, is I didn't know that in a game situation when the coaches are on the field, how was he going to manage everything? And he did a really good job. And not only do that, did he do that, he was able to extend plays uh, and uh, and have a lot of fun. Uh, and you got to kind of see uh, his swagger come out. And Trey McDonald's has been, been making plays all spring, and so it's been really good for him. You know, with Ahern, you know, not being able to practice to get all of those reps. Same thing with Stevie Bracey. Um, so it was fun. It was fun just to see guys get out there and compete 
And I'm anxious to watch the tape because then you'll get to see uh, probably some that I missed, you know. And there's going to be some some whining back and forth on some plays that they thought were sacks, or sometimes when the quarterback wasn't live tagging off. But uh, but you got to let them play, got to let them have fun. And then also too, that creates a situation that now you got to respond. Maybe you thought the play was supposed to go this way, it doesn't. Now you got to respond. So there's so much that you can get uh, out of a spring game, and I'm grateful that uh, we were in a position to be able to split the teams evenly and actually play uh, a true uh, first half of the game and then a kind of a modified second half. Tony, Jameer Carter is a guy who's played a lot of snaps in his career. Just how do you challenge a guy like that to kind of take the next step? Yeah, um, you know, biggest thing with, with Jameer is just, you know, make sure that you keep your life simple. Okay, you don't try and do too much because if you if you know anything about Jameer, he doesn't need much motivation. He's one of those guys that you got to say, "Whoa!" You're not telling him to go. He's like, "Whoa!" You got to you got to manage him because he'll go so hard. You know, for example, I think back to uh, to last summer. Uh, he's uh, he done he done worked himself into a full body cramp because he had two workouts uh, and then he went out and did his own personal workout. So he's the kind of guy that you really have to to to, to help him to understand that you know more is not always better. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes less is better. Be strategic in what you're doing uh, and really focus on the things now and fine tuning. Like, you know, make sure your diet's where it needs to be. Make sure you're stretching. Make sure you're doing all those complimentary things, you know, at a high level. Because when, when you spot the ball or you go out to practice, man, he goes into his zone. And, man, he scared me, actually, uh, out there. I, he made a play and he started talking and hooping, hollering and shaking his head. And, you know, I hadn't really seen as much of that because he's, he's more of a quiet guy. But uh, I'm, I'm actually uh, – Excited, too, because it tells me that now he wants to kind of take a step forward from a leadership standpoint. So in terms of the physical stuff, he's a guy we got to we have to manage because he's going to go hard. But he has so much potential, you know, as a leader. Um, and then he also has the ability to to really start transitioning to being a pro from a mindset standpoint. Musket mentioned the idea that Calandra being so young and Tony being older and having played a lot, it kind of keeps him young and brings him back. Um, how has Calandria been in terms of fitting in with a bunch of dudes who are older than him? Oh, uh, I think he's got about a handshake uh, with everybody on the team. Uh, so that just kind of tells you that that he has the ability to gel uh, and, and galvanize guys to him. Um, he's just, he, he played, uh, you know, he was in an extremely difficult situation in high school too. You know, uh, the, 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 the team that he was in charge of, of leading and to see how he was able to, to, you know, bridge that locker room, bring it together. Um, it just tells you that, you know, he's got, he's got that moxie to him uh, and he's got that Florida swag. Uh, which uh, which I like, you know. There were a couple of times I had to tell him out there, "Hey, look, play like your jersey's not orange, right?" Because he's running around trying to do a little bit too much uh, at times. But uh, also too, when, with guys like that, you don't want to take away from what makes them special and just that mentality that I can make every play, um, that I can make every throw, uh, and then also that pushes uh, the older guys too. And so, so Tony's right. Uh, when you have a when you have a younger pup. Right, that you know is going to be a guy, it kind of, and and then you have an opportunity to teach him. Right, it makes you better as well. Coach, I don't know. Go ahead, Chris, and we'll take the last question. Yep. I don't know how much live special teams you did yep. for the spring as a whole, but right. today there were some miscues and stuff. Right, what, kind of. What is your evaluation of that group? Right, so. So when you when you go into spring again, you only have 15 practices, and so you prioritize. And really, the things that, that you prioritize is your punt team. Right? You prioritize your punt team. You prioritize field goal. And you prioritize kickoff. And then some of your return stuff, you know, you you just you know work on those things when you when you can kind of fit it into your schedule. And then when you go to the spring game, now you're splitting the teams evenly, so you don't have as much continuity when it comes to uh, special teams. And so you know, punt return is 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 the bottom of the list, right? Because you still work on, we work on catching the balls every day, but in terms of putting teams out there, you know, punt return is probably the one that we leak, we uh, that we work the, the least, right? And then second, then kickoff return. And so what you saw is mostly those were the, were the issues that you had right there. Malik, uh, you would, you would assume, right? But, you know, he's out there and, and he was told to put his heels on the eight, but now you, you got to, Take the return. I mean, the coverage team to the other side. Give a fair, you know, don't give a fair catch so that they chase you, or you got to poison the ball. Um, and so, just those are things that will 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 hit hard once we get into fall camp. Uh, but special teams, you know, we prioritize. And what you saw was more just a function of guys that 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 may not have had any reps, right? Because we're uh, splitting the team evenly, you know, they they may be having to perform a function that that we didn't have enough time in the spring uh, to be able to uh, to work on. Mm-hmm.
So many things did not go the way that you wanted them and planned them last year, and a lot of guys left. This is a really new team, and you truly have the chance to shape your program the way you want it. So uh, what core principles do you want to install in this very talented group of young men? Well, the first thing is, man, I'm grateful for the guys that came back. I mean, there were a lot of guys that came back. And I, and I know we had some guys that, that departed, um, but we had a lot of guys decide to come back. Um, and so that's been the that's been the focus, and and uh, and really, uh, the biggest thing is it's it's year two. Okay, there's there's a little bit more continuity. Guys understand what the expectation is. They understand that I want you running on the field, off the field. You know, everything you do uh, has a purpose, and so that's not new to them. Whereas last year, uh, a lot of that stuff was, was was new to them, right? And then you have to put in other core principles. You're establishing a culture. You're putting in an offense. You're putting in a defense, right? You're dealing with, you know. Older guys, younger guys, guys that have had success, you know, guys that, that, that really don't have experience. So, you know, year two is, uh, is, uh, is off to a good start. Obviously, we got, we got a lot of things that we got to work on, um, and we got great evaluation over the spring. Uh, but the biggest thing for me is just core value-wise, just continuing to, to instill the mindset, the mentality, the attitude, uh, the processes, and the way that we work, um, and then find ways to continue to find joy and fun uh, in doing those things.